Hey guys, Eileen Vick here for Adult Coloring with Eileen Vick. And as you can see in this video, I am doing the continuation coloring of the Worlds Within Worlds Kirby uh, Rosanes. Rosannes. I don't know which it is. I'm going to try and say Rosannes because I think that's what everybody else is saying. Anyway, Kirby Rosannes, World Within Worlds specifically the dragon with the Chinese gate. So as you can see, I've been doing some coloring on this little guy and it's been going phenomenally well. Let me adjust my light so I don't have any obnoxious shine on it. There we go. Yeah, there we go. So it, like I said, as you can see, I've been doing the coloring and notice, again, you can see the color difference between these scales and these scales because these ones have the brown that I added to it. So let me talk a little bit about that. One of the things that we've got to be careful of in doing this is we've got so many competing elements here that we want to be really careful that we highlight the right things and that they complement each other instead of compete with each other. So as I explained to you in my last video, I darkened the scales so that you would be able to see the distinguishing difference between the flames and the scales. And I will be doing that for the rest of the project. Now, <clears throat> at one time I had the thought of taking the orange reddish scales brownish scales to about here and then changing to more orangey and then to brown and I got to thinking about that and that was just too much color competition I just want the dragon to pop out like like it is I'm real happy with this so in today's video I'm going to show you how I've been coloring these flames that are around the outside of the dragon and as you can see, they are a slightly different color. I'll show you exactly how I did it. And then I've done a little bit of work on the Chinese walkway. That is with a gold pencil, metallic pencil with the brown. And I'll be doing that all the way through. So I'm gonna show you how I did that. And also, I want to show you some of the extra things <clears throat> that I inked in because it's important to this project. I just think it's going to make it a whole bunch better. Let me grab a little water. So, I'm real excited to continue this series. Thank you for everybody that's been sticking with me. Thank you for all the comments you've been sending me especially by email that's really the best way if you have any questions and I will remind you that this particular project was by request so I don't mind at all and if you have another project you would like me to color um, let me know if I have the coloring book I'll do it <clears throat> I'd like to do a little bit different than Kirby Rosane Roseanne's Roseanne's um, but if not, you know, that's fine too. We'll see how it all goes. All right. So last video, I showed you how to do the flames. In this video, I'm going to show you how I'm doing the clouds, the fire clouds that are around the outside of the dragon. So let me flip this little guy over. And this is a segment that I'm going to be doing. I'll pull you in so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And just keep in mind, well, even better. Yeah, let me leave it right side up so you can get a better feel for what's going on. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to be doing is any of the dark spots. I'm going to go ahead and color that orange. And you will see why in a minute, a few minutes. And 
And again, the orange that I happen to be using is the Sevo Vivid Orange. And if you want to see the pencils that I've chosen for this project, just pop over to my last video, my previous video on this, because I, I showed all three of them. All right. And this will all make sense with why I'm doing this the way this way. I hope everybody's been doing okay. I was gonna say doing okay this week, but it's only Tuesday. <laughs> so let me say I hope everybody <laughs> has a quiet, uneventful week. <laughs> oh, we could all use that. So getting all this orange done. And by the way, if you haven't done it already, I would highly encourage you to join my Facebook group, Adult Coloring with Eileen Vick, because during the day when I color, I turn on my camera and I just color. Uh, it's not really structured per se, but if anybody has any questions, that's the time you could do it. So I would really encourage you to join my group so you can see what, I, what I'm doing. My uh, daytime in my study, in my studio, is the times that I use to finish my projects and dream up fun stuff for you. And I've got some really neat stuff I'm going to be showing you in my next video. Okay, so we got that. Like I said, this will make sense in a minute. So everybody that's seen my dragon so far has really liked it. I belong to a number of coloring groups and I will post every once in a while one of my work, my WIP, WIP work in progress. And everybody seems to be liking the dragon that I'm doing the color choices. And as you can see, I'm not too worried if I spill over a little bit the orange outside of the lines, which you know is hysterical for me because I go outside of line when I'm coloring on camera and I go, oh, got to fix it. <laughs> In this case, it doesn't matter. Okay. So, everywhere the Kirby had shading, I colored with orange. So, let me get a piece of paper just to back up on the edge here. Yeah, I was looking on the other side of this. Let me pull you out or else it's going to drive you crazy. This is the side with the, um, can't just, I think it's a shrimp. Sea urchin or shrimp. I got to look it up and see what this is. And this is the one that I was showing you how to do the inking on, on these lines. which turned out really beautifully. 
All right. So now the next thing I want to do is, ta-da, <laughs> is use my Canary Yellow Polychromos uh, 916. And I'm going to go ahead and color now. these fire clouds so now I am going to be picky about being inside of the line And by the way, that beautiful piano music that you're hearing, Whisperings Piano, I pay a subscription to it. I do not get paid for promoting it over my channels. That's not the point. I'm doing it actually because, out of the goodness of my heart, because number one, I love the music and the people that run it are just really great people. And the price is ridiculously inexpensive. It's 30 bucks for the year. And it's nothing but piano music. Okay. Get my paper out of the way here. And I am specifically coloring over the orange that I just put there because we want to, or I want to, tamp down that color. In other words, I don't want it conflicting with the dragon. So you need to think about stuff like that when you're coloring if you're using similar colors and these are similar it's orange and the yellow da, da, da. As you can see when I get back on camera, my bad is that I am coloring in circles, which gives you a really nice smooth laying down of the colors. Now, because I've got my paper here, I'm going to go ahead and do my edges first. <sighs> now, if you can, try to avoid coloring on top of the black lines, you know, except we're going over the orange, of course. But if you can avoid going over those lines, it really does make a quality difference in your final piece. Oh man, that area is going to be so pretty by the time I'm done. Okay. Oh, anyway, so back to my videos. Um, 
so my coloring off camera is to finish up the projects that I'm doing on camera. For example, I'm not going to go through on camera and color every single bar here. I'll do that off camera and finish it. And then I'll post the final picture in my group. I gotta get rid of that song, I don't like it. And I'm going to sharpen my pencil. Just broke. All right, give me a second while I sharpen again. Hate that. I'm not going to go with as sharp as a point and see if that helps. And remember as you're coloring, when you pick up your pencil to shift position, turn it slightly, and then that keeps your point uniform. And that would be Vicky saying hello. She likes to come up into my studio because, of course, she thinks I'm talking to her when I'm talking to you. Oh, yeah. Talking about killing two birds with one stone. Okay, so we finished that white area there, make sure that orange is covered. Boy, you can really tell where I haven't colored too, can't you? And don't forget to use your brush to get your particles off the page 
so that your hand doesn't grind them into the color. And I can tell right now I'm going to have to go into one of my other pencil sets and get a comparable yellow because this guy is almost gone. But that is okay. All right. Let me make sure I haven't missed any spaces. If I do, tell me. Okay, so I'm done with the yellow. And let me pull you up. Yeah, I'm gonna have to turn the page a little bit just because of what I'm doing. But what I'm doing now is I'm taking my red and I'm going to highlight the tops of the smoke circles. But before I do that, I'm going to parallel them with A red line. Let me take you back here so you can see, okay? I want to get that flamey look. So you just want to draw parallel lines in a curve. Mm -hmm. Take your time. Pull you in. And as you can see, the yellow is causing the red to come out more orangey, which is exactly what I wanted because the orange is like a flame. So as you know, when I'm showing <clears throat> you something, unless I've completely botched it, there is a method to my madness. Go over your line two or three times. Doesn't that look neat? And guys, these lines don't have to be perfect. Don't fuss over them. All you have to do is basically parallel the lines that Kirby drew, uh, drew in. This is looking really good. But 
but I need you to stick with me because of course this isn't everything that I'm going to be doing to this little puppy. So what I'm going to do is basically stop on this side of it because I believe you have the idea by now because there are a couple more things that I need to do with this and then I want to show you the Chinese um, walkway. Okay. Now, what you're going to do after that, and I want you to look here. Do you see how I've colored in with this red on the curves? Okay. So that's what you want to do next. So we're going to highlight those curves a little bit and then blend them into the lines that you've already put there. And you can really see the difference between this and this because this is so yellow right now and that needs to be tamped down so now I am going to the outer edge and I'm going to selectively color in the curves now don't get too regular with what you're coloring in right you still want it to look like smoky happenstance does that make sense <laughs> smoky happenstance okay I'm just full of big words tonight. Happenstance. <laughs> oh my. Oh, let's see something here. And take your time. And remember, this is my red that I'm working with, but look how orangey that looks. Isn't that cool? And there was no way I could have used my orange pencil on this because it would have disappeared. Okay. Here's a good one that shows you an example of this. And again, I remind you that if you haven't used my same colors, which is fine, you can still use the same uh, method with whatever colors you're using. The biggest point that I want to make is for you to realize that you don't want these, the red here to conflict with the red over here on the scales, okay? So let me do a couple more of these. Oh, that's just turning out beautifully. Okay, 
and actually let me do one more. I'm just gonna do this because I just gotta show you one extra thing to finish this off. And then just lighten up as you go in with your pencil. There we go. All right. Now, the last thing I'm going to do, let me see something here. All right, is I'm going to take my orange, okay, not my red, but my orange now, and I'm going to lightly go over my yellow. Why? Because I don't want that yellow to be sticking out like a sore thumb. See, now I colored a little bit of orange here, but see the difference? That's very bright yellow. That's more, more mood, muted yellow and by coloring it orange that makes your fire clouds have that ominous fire aspect I mean look how pretty that is see and thank goodness the Kirby with his publisher used really good paper because you can layer on it like this. I mean, as you've been watching, I've got some serious layers on this. And I'm going to show you this difference in a second here. There. Okay. Now, what I want you to see, and you're already seeing it, is the difference between what I just colored over in the orange and the cloud with the, um, excuse me, the smoke cloud without that orange over the yellow. See the difference? I think it makes it look really good. Now, having said that, if you, and I chose not to do it, I, I wanted it muted all the way, but let's say you color this the orange, you left that yellow, and then this, you know, spot right here yellow, and then it went orange with here. So you're gonna have, here, let me see if I can do it up here for you. So bear with me a second while I fill this in here. I 
This is gonna look really cool too. Okay, so let's say that you decided, and I need to fix one thing real quick too while I'm looking at this. There we go, that was bugging me. All right, so let's say that you decided to leave this particular cloud open, okay, or not shaded with the orange, which is fine. So let's go ahead and I'm going to shade around that one spot. In fact, let me leave this open right here too. So as a color variation, look how that stands out from the rest, but still works with it because it's all similar, all uh, similar colors. Let me color this just to fix that. So you can vary what you decide to leave the brighter yellow and the clouds uh, muted with the orange. All right, so let me pull you out. Look at that, isn't that cool? So here's what I'm talking about. This has not been muted right here. The clouds around it have. So now you have that little disbursement of brighter color with the darker. Now, because I haven't done it over here or on my other spots, let me pull, show you this. See, I, I, I took my orange and muted them all. So I have to stay with that. Okay, so whatever you do, just be consistent with it. Okay. Oh, love how this is turning out. Okay, so let me brush this and now I'm going to move on to the Chinese walkway or bridge, whatever you want to call it. And I wanted just something that was really uh, Elegant, that's the word I want. But I don't want to conflict with anything else that I'm doing. So I've got my gold here. And I'm coloring over the entire piece here. So I'm deliberately laying the gold. Oh man. <laughs> As the base color. And then what I'm going to do is Let me do one more. And then I'm gonna go back and lightly with my brown, I'm going to go ahead and color over Kirby's dash marks. 
Now, notice on this one here that the dash mark didn't go all the way to the end. So I didn't let my brown pencil go all the way to the end. So in other words, I want you to honor Kirby's um, marks on that. And the reason for that is, is you don't want these to be too uniform. Okay. Don't forget to turn your pencil. See how I left that little gap right there? Now this one goes over all the way, so I'm going to go ahead and do that with my brown pencil. But notice that it stops there, so that's where I'm going to stop. You don't need a lot of pressure. You don't need to grind into that gold. And let me pull you out so you can see how that's going to look. Isn't that cool? And then what I'm going to do is I'll pick a brown, something different than this brown. Let me see something here. Yeah, duh. This brown that I was using let me pull you in, it is a reddish brown and I did that on purpose because I'm working with oranges and reds. So look at that, that's the color without it sitting on top of the gold. So that's the natural color of the pencil. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna very lightly color the vertical bar and if you've been with me over the years or at least for a while you know I always tell you is go in lightly and then when you want to darken let the pencil strokes naturally do the work so I'm not pressing, I'm just repeating going over the top. Here you go. So I'm following Kirby's. dark marks and then doing the rest of it very lightly turning my pencil each time so there you go Me do one more now actually uh, I'm gonna hold off a second because I didn't notice this earlier now if you've been following my earlier videos you know I like to get my pen involved so what I would be doing is get my narrowest pen which is a 0.28 it's the Uniball Signo in fact I just bought a package of 10 of them <laughs> And I'm going to go through and go ahead and, and add the dash lines. Which might be a little difficult to do because he's got so many verticals here. Yeah, I'm going to have to really look at that before I can know where my dash lines need to go but that's the beauty of using the 
signal pen and adding lines, which also brings me to my third point of this video. And that is taking your narrow pen and filling in the bushes, which is what I did here. Now, you don't have to do a lot, but I just wanted them thicker. And especially where Kirby trails off as he's drawing, I like to fill that in a little bit. There we go. And guys, I really want to get you used to doing this. Don't be afraid to ink draw in your books. It just adds so much to it. Um, I did a little bit on the tree here, which will show up more when I go to color the tree. But I wanted that tree just a little bushier. Come in closer so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. I'm just drawing little squiggles here. So in other words, I'm emulating what Kirby's doing, but adding just a little bit more to it, and that that makes my tree stand out a little better. Yeah. And then this tree here push that up a little bit and you don't have to do much see look it's just truly a couple of squiggles I think it looks better okay now, I also did that with the bushes that were along the side here because they got a little sparse. And then I also did it a little bit in here. And what I also did, if you look in your book, I added the little dash lines in the scales of the dragon. A lot of them were not there, again, because as Kirby was trailing off, he just did his little U's and didn't put the little dash lines in. So I just finished that off as well. So just little touches, nothing weird. Here, look, see, on these bushes here, just going to add just a little more, just to fluff them up a little bit. Now, what I want you to do, please, is go, if you haven't done this already, is go to my video dated April 13th, and you will see where I took my pen and on some of Kirby's stuff, I showed you how I added lines, for example, on the volcano, the shrimp, the dollhouse, um, that sort of thing. I mean, here's a tree up here. Bring you back in on that one.
There you go. So I've got that tree floofed out a little bit. I'm not sure what this is. I don't know if that was a partial. Well, I'm gonna make it part of the tree now. Yeah. And also, if you wanna take the time, totally up to you is to go through and finish the shade lines. Look at that, teeny tiny dashes here. And that's gonna help you when you go to color these. Look at that. Look how much better that's gonna look and especially for coloring now. As these get narrow and narrow, you want to just make your dash lines teeny, teeny, tiny. See, I'm just making, oh my gosh, small, right? Yeah. Let's see, so I got one there, one there. Mm -hmm. I mean, my feeling is if you're going to put this much time in a Kirby Rosanne's um, coloring and use the effects that I'm teaching you, what the heck, you know, why not, why not go ahead and draw some of these lines? All right, let me get you out here a little bit. I think that's it. I'm at 40, 50, I'm 53 minutes right now. So I've shown you a number of things now. I've shown you how to do the fire clouds. I've shown you how to do the wood um, uh, bridge thingy. <laughs> oh man, whatever you want to call that. And I've shown you how to take your black pen and finish off these top wood pieces. I'm gonna do that for this as well, but I won't do it on camera. So yeah, I'm real happy with that and I think it's turning out well. All right, guys, so let me bring you <coughs> both pieces again. And if you didn't catch it in my other videos, guys, this is my, it's a Signo Uniball and it's a 0 0.28, see? Very, very tiny, narrow pen. I like to use a pen instead of markers. All right, so let me get you pulled out here. There you go. You can really see now how this is taking shape, especially getting in these last bits of color on the fire clouds. Isn't that neat? So I'm gonna be finishing the face. I'm gonna be doing the underbelly. I've got fire clouds down here. I'm going to be finishing the Chinese walkway, the bridge and the bushes. So I am thinking there's gonna be one more video on this. If not, you can see the finished piece at uh, on my Facebook group, Adult Coloring with Eileen Vick. And again, if you like to watch uh, like a coloring party type thing, I'll just use that term. But like I said, I sit down and I do stuff like this and it would be a really good 
time for you just to watch it and chat with me and have lots of fun with it. All right, guys, this is Eileen Vick for Adult Coloring with Eileen Vick Joyce, Joyce Coloring. I hope you're having fun and enjoying what I'm showing you. I hope you learned something. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. You guys have a great rest of the day. Bye.